And this week in Smart Stupid People, the good folks at Reddit who truly do embody uh, the smart stupid person came up with another one. Like I said, folks, the gift that just keeps on giving. Uh, Obviously, Internet's pretty upset with our homegirl J.K. Rowling right now. Uh, They're coming at her pretty hard since the new Hogwarts video game came out. And they, so the New York Times posted an article titled In Defense of Jay. I've got my Harry Potter pants on. You do. You do have Harry <laughs> Potter pants on. That's true. You guys can't see it. But the New York Times posted an article titled In Defense of J.K. Rowling. Now, the good folks at Reddit, obviously outraged by this because reddit we're gonna have an in-depth look at reddit hopefully next week i've got some hilarious stuff for you guys that i couldn't fit into the show this week because i didn't want to go like an hour and a half but uh it's we're gonna have some great stuff with reddit next week but the uh the good folks at reddit wanted to link the new york times which we all know is just the staunch conservative newspaper um to the far right so they found an article from 1922, written by the New York Times, talking about how Hitler was a good speaker. And they said this is proof that the New York Times has constantly been perpetrating far-right misinformation. Now, a couple of things here. Number one, no one was concerned about Hitler until the 30s. Like, they just knew of him as, like, this small, like, okay, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Think about, like, I don't know, France, right? And think of, like, the, like, maybe one of the party leaders of the majority leaders of the Senate or Parliament or whatever they have in France. See, we don't even know. Now, imagine 100 years ago without access to the internet, cable TV, really international radio, national radio, anything like that. They had no idea who this guy was. He was, like, the chairman of a political party. Do you know the chairman of political parties in other countries? No. Number two, Hitler objectively was a good speaker. It's a a fact. You don't have to agree with what was being said. I don't agree with a lot of what Obama said, but Obama was a great speaker. Same with Bill Clinton. Not that those guys are anywhere near Hitler. You know, like, Hitler never wore a tan suit, okay? Hitler uh, never uh, got a blowjob in the Oval Office, never smoked weed but didn't inhale, you know, so obviously... No comparison there. But most historians actually credit Hitler's speaking ability to helping him rise to power. So, like, yes, he was a good speaker. Okay, number three, you can acknowledge that someone's good at something without actually liking the person. LeBron James is a great basketball player. Can't stand him. Again, not comparing... LeBron James to Hitler. Hitler never said that flopping was a skill in the playoffs, okay? Totally different people. Number four. This was 100 years ago. Your example of the New York Times being a consistent perpetrator of far-right misinformation. I can't even say that with a straight face. That's one of the most liberal newspapers in the country. So your proof, quote-unquote proof, that the New York Times is this perpetrator and, and pusher of far right misinformation relies on one article from over a hundred years ago about a guy who nobody knew that had nothing to do with his politics and everything to do with his speaking ability. Okay? Number five, not J.K. Rowling, not wanting a grown man to expose himself to little girls in locker rooms, does not make her Hitler. Not the same thing. Not even remotely close to the same thing. J.K. Rowling is about as staunch of a liberal feminist as you can get. She applauds the welfare state. The woman hated men until you guys cornered her and made her side with, like, Matt Walsh. You guys did that. You guys pushed people to the right because they don't pass your purity test. Mind you, J.K. Rowling's big thing came from her opposing grown men being in women's locker rooms. That was her big thing. Of people with penises being in women's locker rooms, which I agree with. Absolutely no business being there. Sorry. I don't know. What, what, do we have to put like a, a, a dick on one locker room and a vagina on the other? 
Is that what we got to do at this point? Because I don't care what mental condition you have that makes you feel like a woman. If you got a schlong, you got no business in the women's locker room. You got no business being around my wife, my daughter, nothing. You have no business being there. You are a predator. Whether you admit it or not, you are a predator because you are exposing yourself, your junk, your male genitalia. I'm not calling you a man. Calm down. You're exposing your male genitalia to women and young girls that probably don't want to see it. You are a predator. Period. End of story. She's not wrong. So, like, my thing is, it's all about, oh, believe women, value women's opinions. Again, it's same thing as with the Andrew Tate thing. What do we only value the opinions and the feelings of women that, that have the correct, politically correct, approved opinions? Like, I'm sorry. Or should we listen to everyone? Because I bet if you went and polled every woman individually in private, the overwhelming majority of them would say, yeah, I don't want to see a penis in a locker room, not in a women's locker room. Man, hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to click the link in the description to get the full episode on Rumble. If you prefer to listen along, you can actually get us on Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. You can also go to www.outlawstreamers.com to learn more about not just my show, but tons of other great shows and all the exciting projects they have coming up. Follow my socials at Caleb Isn't Funny on Twitter and Instagram, at Caleb Salvatore Comedy on the Chinese spy app that is TikTok, and be sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks, and we'll see you every Saturday for brand new episodes of That's Based. Peace.